What's up, guys? Welcome back to today's episode of the Sports Sermon. We are brought to you by Scooch, the most functional phone case on the market. Check out scoochcase.com to get yours today and use the code SPORTS18, sports with a Z, of course, to get a 10% discount on your order. Stay tuned till the end for a special Scooch giveaway as well. But now, today's episode. All right, and welcome inside the Sports Sermon. I am Dylan Staggy here today with Jason Gandhi, Dan Majors, and Zach Munson. As you, and as you can tell by the title, we are talking about the Houston Texans today. A year ago, they finished 4-12 and after basically their whole team just getting injured. Deshaun Watson came in and had a great six-game stretch, uh, but then he was done for the season along with most of their good players on the defensive side. Uh, but this offseason, uh, they made a few moves. Uh, most notably, Tyron Matthew uh, joins the squad. Their top two picks were traded to the Browns, one for Deshaun Watson and one to get rid of um, Brock Osweiler. So that wasn't the draft wasn't too eventful for the Texans. But they come back with mostly the same squad. Uh, but let's talk about Deshaun Watson first. Do you guys expect the same Deshaun Watson uh, from that six-game stretch this year coming back from injury? Yeah, I personally do. I mean, I'm not expecting him to be, like, getting four touchdowns every single game, but I think the same level of production that he had this past year, I think I can expect all 16 games. I loved when he played in college. I thought he was one of the best quarterbacks coming out of the draft, and I thought he lived up to that and more. I absolutely have no reason to doubt that Deshaun Watson won't be coming out guns a-blazing next year. Yeah, I agree with you. The only thing is you maybe say against him or that defenses might have had a whole year to prepare for him, or he might have a sophomore slump, but I don't see that coming for Deshaun Watson. He's so explosive. He has like confidence, that swagger, and you know he was he's probably the best player Clemson's ever had in their whole history. So uh, I'm a big Deshaun Watson fan. Yeah, I I agree. I think he will definitely be about the same. Um, and a lot of the Texans' season will depend on Watson's health. He was on pace to throw 43 touchdowns last year, and while he was healthy, Houston was third in rushing, but 31st without him. It was an injury-ridden team last year, as Dylan said, and I think everyone knows it here. Um, and Watson, I think that was the biggest one. So. Yeah, I think it's pretty ridiculous to expect to, him to go for that um, last four games of the six games he did play, averaging four touchdowns per game. Uh, he is coming off an injury, and now teams should be more prepared. I still think he's a very solid QB, though, from what we saw. Um, they didn't even have a good offensive line, and he just had an insane connection with both Hopkins and Fuller when he was in. There was one stretch where, like, Will Fuller caught a touchdown like every other pass he caught. It was fantasy beats. Yeah. Uh, while Watson was in, then after that he was just not at all. But let's look at the running game for the Houston Texans. Um, they have two running backs at the top of the depth chart, Lamar Miller and Deontay Foreman. Uh, which one do you think should take more carries this season? I, I think that Houston should deploy the same system that the Falcons do. Last year for the Falcons, there were 196 carries to Devontae Freeman, 156 carries to Tevin Coleman. I think the Texans should do exactly that. If they do that, they can be in really good shape. I'd probably give them more carries to Miller right now because Deontay Foreman's coming off a bigger injury, but definitely they should not have a premier lead back. Split the carries, but try to yeah keep, try to keep it pretty even. Let Foreman show his explosiveness and really just see what both can do. Uh, I like Foreman better as a runner as he is really powerful and has some solid speed. They're both pretty solid receivers out of the backfield, and Miller is the better pass protector. Um, neither will have breakaway speed. But they should be a solid backfield. Uh, yeah, I, I I think that they should have like a, a split backfield as well. Um, also agree that Lamar Miller maybe should get a little more carries, but I've always been underwhelmed by Lamar Miller. He averaged 55 and a half yards a game last year. His yards per carry has been historically has been low. I've had him in fantasy. No, the past I, I mean years. for the Dolphins, he everyone was saying he didn't oh, get enough Texans, carries. Sorry. Now in the Texans, he is just not good at all. Yeah. So I've had him fancy the past two years, and he's been very underwhelming. Um, but yeah, I, I think Dante Foreman should definitely get um, at least half the carries. 
I'm more on the Foreman side. I mean, Lamar Miller last year, he averaged 3.7 yards per carry. His most rushing yards in a game, 75 yards. His two years with the Texans have just been a bust. And Foreman is five years younger. He averaged 4.2 yards per carry last year. I think it's time to hand over most of the reins to him. Obviously, he's not going to be the best pass catching back, so I think you bring in Miller for those type of situations. But uh, for me, I like Foreman a little bit better to take more of the carries this year. But let's look at the defensive side now for the Texans. Obviously, last year, just an insane amount of injuries. Now they bring in Tyron Matthew. How good can this defense be if everyone's healthy? Yeah. Really, I think they can definitely be top five. They have, I think they have more talent on their defense than almost any, every other team in the NFL. You get to have Watt and Clowney on the outsides to rush the passer, Tyron Matthew in the secondary. Those are three stars right there. But along with fantastic role players around them, with guys like Whitney Merciless, Aaron Colvin, Jonathan Joseph, they are definitely one of the most talented team D- defenses and, I mean, ge- in general teams in the league. I think they should definitely be top five all year long. Yeah, I mean, that's that's what I was going to say, to be honest, just echoing what he said. Yeah, I think this defense, they can be elite if healthy. They get everyone back that was hurt last year, and they get two great additions in Tyron Matthew and Aaron Colvin. One underrated thing, though, is that Romeo Crennel is back as coordinator, and the last time he was in that role, they were first in defense. Yeah, I mean... The injuries are going to be a big concern for them now. On paper, I would have them as the second-best defense in the NFL, only behind uh, the Jaguars, just because they have so much talent everywhere. I mean, Tyron Matthew, it it went a little bit under the radar, his signing, but he has just struggled so badly with injuries. J.J. Watts only played in six games over the past two years. Jadavion Clowney had problems at the beginning of his career. If If everyone stays on the field... For me, they're the second best defense in the NFL, but um, I just think it's going to be a huge concern that I, I don't think they'll all be able to stay healthy in this defense. It's got to be better than last year, though. Yeah, I mean, I don't think anything could be worse yeah. than last year for the <laughs> Texans' injuries. Um, it was just so bad. I mean, they were just on a roll, and then all of a sudden, they're four and twelve, and the Browns had their pick, so <laughs> they didn't even get to pick fourth in the draft. Yeah. But, like, I don't know. I mean, you mentioned J.J. Watt and then playing six games. I, I think at some point it's not always just, like, a fluke. I think you have to give some sort of credibility to injuries. Like, I don't think it's a guarantee that he's going to be healthy all season long. Oh, no. Like, yeah. he's been hurt yeah. almost every year for multiple weeks of the season. Last year was a fractured left tibia. The year before it was a back. The year before that it was groin. The year before that it was hand. Like, he's just oh, he's been very banged up. And so I think – that's one thing I am worried about with this defense is they're not very durable and they're deep to a certain extent, but eventually they are going to wear down and we saw it happen last year. I think even if Deshaun Watson's healthy, but if this defense does get hurt a lot, I don't see them being a premier team if their defense doesn't stay healthy the whole year. Yeah, so I, I think mean, that's a big question mark because Jadavian Clowney has injury concern. J.J. Watt has injury concerns. Those type yeah. of guys. I don't really think they're deep at all. I think besides, I mean, their starting lineup is insane, but... Beyond that, I mean, that's why they struggled so much last year and everyone got hurt. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, they still got Deshaun Watson back. Though, so if he stays healthy, they should be good enough to be – I mean, if Deshaun Watson's healthy, they won't come in last in this division. They should be second or third, maybe even first if they all do stay healthy. But if he's not healthy, if Deshaun Watson's healthy, it could be the same thing as last year. It's really going to depend on the defense on what is the ceiling for the Texans. All right, so I want to hear all of you guys' record prediction – their place in the division, and whether the Texans will make the playoffs this season. Yeah, so I went went to their schedule, and they actually have the worst strength of schedule, which means they have the easiest schedule of the all 32 teams going into the season. And you just look at the games they have. There's not too many tough ones besides their own division, having to play Tennessee and Jacksonville twice. They've also got new, at New England to start the season off. At Philadelphia should be a tough game. But really, I don't see a way this team doesn't have a nine and seven, ten and six record, eleven and five, maybe. I have them at ten and six, second in the division, and they will be a wild card spot in the playoffs. I also have. Them. I swear I did not look at his his thing, but I also have ten and six, second in the division, and yes, they're going to be on the fringe of the playoffs. Because I mean, ten and six gets you in. Yeah, usually. I mean, yeah, usually. Even nine and seven sometimes. Wow, what do you know? I got ten and six, second in the division, and 
Uh, they do make the playoffs. I think if healthy, they can win any game on this schedule. And I Whoa. think. Whoa. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. No, I, I mean, if they're healthy, they're a top team in this league. No, I know. I'm just saying, like, it's just like a bull prediction. But yeah. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, I think they go on a big winning streak from late October to uh, December. Uh, they will definitely compete. For the division, but going from four and twelve to winning the division is just way too big of a turnaround for me. I don't think it's that big a turnaround because it's not like you're bringing in new guys. I mean, these are the I same mean, guys; yeah. they're just coming back from injury. It's just unrealistic. Yeah, like, just like the thought of saying a team goes four and twelve to win the division just isn't like. It's like it's weird to the like Browns think about. going zero and sixteen to making. I mean, the right, Dan. <laughs> the Colts did it when from two thousand ten when they were two and fourteen to eleven and totally five. Different next situation. Year. I mean, it is. Yeah, that's why I say this one's like even less unrealistic because they have the same players coming back. Yeah. Anyway, um, I I think what he's saying is just a matter of like it's weird to think a team can go four and twelve to being first in the division. Not that it's not possible; it's just like different. Like it's like you're not going to predict it because it it doesn't happen very often. But I mean, I think we're all pretty optimistic on the Texans in general. Mm. Yeah, I would have. 10-6 Ten and six. Also, <laughs> uh, I think they're the second best team uh, in the division behind the Jaguars. But I think it's really close, and it could definitely be a toss up uh, by the end of the season. I think this whole division is really close. But uh, if they do get to ten wins, they'll definitely be in the playoff hunt. I don't see any reason, un- unless the same kind of injuries happen, that the Texans won't be in the playoff hunt come playoff time. But yeah. any last thoughts on the Texans, guys? I definitely, I mean, you hit the nail on the head earlier. I think Tyron Matthew, that signing really kind of went under the radar. So don't let that catch you by surprise when you've got the honey badger flying around back there. The Aaron Colvin signing thinks another one that's going to throw some people by surprise. It was a really good corner in Jacksonville last year. He's going to come over. I think this Texans defense is going to surprise people. And just enjoy the season if you're a Texans fan. Deshaun Watson's going to bowl. Enjoy that. Have a, I mean, hopefully DeAndre Hopkins signs that extension next year. I think Hopkins is going to have – I think he'll be the best receiver in football this year. I really do. I think DeAndre Hopkins wow. is going to have one heck of a season. All right. If Deshaun Watson stays healthy. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, those two were crazy last year when they played together. Mm-hmm. Any he, birthdays today? Or? Oh, I haven't looked. I don't <laughs> think so. I'll get those ready for the next ones. Don't worry. Yeah, we, we have some birthday shout-outs uh, from Jason. If you go Usually. check out our other NFL episodes – um, but that's going to do it for today. And if you listen to the intro, you heard Jason talk about uh, Scooch. So the uh, contest that he mentioned, if you comment on this video or any of our videos or subscribe uh, to our channel, you are entered automatically into a contest to win a Scooch Wingman case. Uh, so make sure you do that. Also check out our code in the description to make sure you get that discount at scoochcase.com. But that's all we have for today, and we will see you very soon with some more NFL team predictions.